back to my channel. Last week we finished this corded corset and chemise. This week it's time to get started on the tiered skirt for this project. To create the silhouette for this gown I will be using an 1850s cage crinoline that I previously made for my last aerial ball gown as well as a cotton flounced skirt that I will be using as a petticoat. I drafted a pattern for this skirt using math, so let's get to cutting out my fabric. The first and most extreme roadblock I ran into during this project was that my lighter purple taffeta I only had 5 yards of instead of 10 yards that I thought I had. This was complete human error on my part for tracking how much fabric I actually had, so the bottom portion of this skirt doesn't turn out nearly as full as I hope or I had hoped it would, but I still think this whole skirt turned out beautiful. I really wanted to add a bit of body to the top tier of fabric so that it would sit nicely on top of the bottom skirt tier, so I adhered power boost lining to the back of the taffeta with a pressing cloth and my iron set to the wool setting. I held my iron on each spot for about three to five seconds and then I moved on to the next spot. I prefer to do this step before I sew all the strips together, it just makes sewing easier and it did help minimize fraying on the top and bottom of this tier before I sewed those up. All right, so I had originally um, created a design, uh, like a scalloped embroidered design for this fabric, but when I started looking at the edges of it, I realized that that would be so much work and it already has a really nice pretty edge. So I'm actually going to leave this edge and keep the the scallop, like the edge that it has. Um, I do need to, before I rhinestone this, because I am rhinestoning this, add a basting stitch at the top so I, I can gather it down and pin it to the, the flounce that it's going to go on to. Well, I guess I can do it after I rhinestone it so that I can and just leave like an inch at the top. I haven't decided if I even need to finish this or because like it doesn't fray or anything and it doesn't look horrible, but like, I don't know. Cause I thought like I would gather it down and then like sew it down. Like, like the, the raw edge would be sewn kind of like the right side of the flounce or of the lace to the right side of the flounce. And then it would get folded this way. And so then like that raw edge wouldn't be seen. So it, it would kind of look like this. Um, so I think I'm going to leave it raw for now. I'm going to set my two pieces aside because tomorrow is a rhinestoning day and I'm going to start, um, French seaming everything together. The first thing I'm going to do is the base. So I'll French seam the base and then I'll French seam each flounce and, um, I'll get the hem on the both flounces done. Maybe, well, I do have a meeting at two 30. I'm going to just try to French seam really quick. How about that? Yeah. So let's do that. In order to do a French seam, I sew each strip together with the wrong sides together. The base of the skirt is made up of three strips of fabric while the tiers are each consisted of four strips of fabric. After sewing the wrong sides together, I will press the seam and then I will trim the allowance down to one quarter of an inch. Then I can flip my fabric out so that the right sides are together and continue to press and stitch this together, encasing the raw edge within my stitching. Now for the hem of these tiers. I will fold and press the hem by one half of an inch once and then a second time to encase the raw edge at the bottom. 
Then I will sew this down on my machine and press it to make sure that it lays flat. Hello friends, so today and maybe the next day, I don't exactly know, um, I'm going to be rhinestoning the white like lacy flounces. So what I have here is some, I finally invested in one of these little picker uppers. I did not get the big famous katana one or whatever because they were $35 and this was $5. So um, if this is crap, I've been told that a crayon works. I don't think I have any crayons, but you guys have also seen me rhinestone on this channel. I have no doubts about using my fingers. Like I'm fine with it. The internet isn't fine with it, but I'm fine with it. Um, I'm using these Bohemian AB crystals. I really like these. To me, the, the light, the way the light hits them and the shine they have, and the color richness is on par with Swarovski. So, uh, and they're, I wanna say like a third to a quarter of the price. I got these for $5 for one, um, about, about a thousand of them. So I'm okay with that price. Um, and then I did, I've seen a lot of people do this before and I've had a lot of people suggest getting, um, basically like empty crafting syringes and filling your glue in that. So I did do that. I have those and I have two different size needles. I'm going to use the smaller one for the first batch of glue and then see how it goes. They are disposable or like non-reusable. So it does have a little bit more of a, um, environmental impact. If this speeds up my process so significantly that my world is changed, I'll invest in a lot more. But if it's one of those things where like it speeds it up only a little bit, I'm probably not going to buy them again because again of the environmental impact of the plastic that it takes to make these. But I just wanted to give it a shot because I get so many comments about this and about using these tools and it just, I don't know, I fell under peer pet pressure. I felt like I had to at least do it and tried it so that I could have an opinion on it. So the next thing I'm going to show you is I have this ruler. It is three inches by 18 inches and I'm going to, when I actually rhinestone, have a, like a camera over my shoulder so you'll get to see it, but I wanted to explain it first. I have parchment paper down underneath my lace and I place this down and I'm going to place it to line up with the top and starting from the top, I'm going to place a rhinestone every two inches down. And then once I get this whole row done, I'm going to take this whole thing. Again, this is three inches, line it up with those, um, rhinestones and then do it over. So basically I'm placing them every two by three inches, I guess, or every two inches down and every three inches lengthwise. Um, and that should have a nice dramatic coverage without it being so dense that it is heavy and not attractive. So we'll see how that goes. And uh, I will be watching um, men's gymnastics on the Olympics because it is the Olympics. And I've always been a fan of gymnastics. My favorite sports to watch in the Olympics are typically gymnastics and swimming. So normally I, I prefer the women's gymnastics, but that doesn't start for another day. So here we are. Um, if you're watching the Olympics right now, what sports do you like to watch? I'm not a big sports person, but gymnastics and ice skating have been something I've been interested in since I was a little girl. So I watch them. Um, oh, and I do have my fabric weights holding my fabric down because how I plan to attack this is going from this side all the way to this side of the parchment paper. I have this square parchment paper and then I'll lift it up to see how it's doing. 
if it's dry enough to move over, I will. And if the parchment paper, I know I'll have to replace the par parchment paper over time, but I've also, I know I'm able to use a decent amount of parchment paper. So we'll see. Um, I'm going to get started. Hello friends, I am back and I have rhinestoned all of my fabric. There is seven yards of this lace that I have cut into a 12 inch piece wide and an 18 inch piece wide. And now that it's completely rhinestoned, um, I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to, yeah, you can't really see it, but I'll get some really buttery close up goodness for this part of the video. Um, I've rhinestoned everything and now I'm going to add the gather stitches. Basically to do this, I am going to mark this into four sections and then sew a basting stitch into each four sections so that there's little strings at the end and um, then I can gather it down and get it to fit their corresponding ruffle and I have the ruffles in the corner there. I'm kind of a mess with like all of this right now. I don't know why, I just am not organized or anything. It's fine. Um, you can see here I've got this like lightly pinned. I just did it for filming a reel for Instagram, but basically what my goals are for today. Obviously, I would really like to finish this skirt today. I don't think that's realistic, but let's just talk through the process. So. I will ruffle these down or gather these down, get them onto their ruffles or their flounces. Then I'm going to gather the longer bottom one down, which is the lighter colored like lavender and get that gathered down as well and attached to this skirt base. That is pr realistically going to get done today. Then I need to gather down the top of this skirt base to the waist and also gather down the top flounce, which is shorter, it's got the little high-low, and get that pinned and sewn into the, core, the, the, the waist together. And that process might get done today, we shall see. But if I do get that done today, I can basically add the waistband. And if I add the waistband, I might as well just finish it today. So we'll see how that goes. Um, yeah, let's get, let's get to it. Let's do the thing. Off camera, I added a basting stitch to the top of this flounce so that it would be ready to gather when I was done adding the lace. But basically to add the lace, I decided to keep the top raw since I really liked the way that looked. Then I pinned the edge of the lace to the edge of the flounce. And then I pinned the first quarter marking of the lace onto the first seam. Since there are basically four strips of this fabric, I was able to pin each like quarter piece of lace to each seam and they would that would help me know like this is a quarter of this and this is a quarter of that. Then I start, once those two sides are gathered for the first quarter, I start gathering it down from one edge and I will just pin things in place as I start like, getting it gathered to fit and it starts to look the way that I want it to look. I repeated this process on the second panel with the lighter colored taffeta and then I brought it all over to my sewing machine to sew it down. Hey y'all, so I've been pretty distracted this week and got very little done yesterday. You can see some of it just kind of hanging out. I really just, 
I don't know, I get like joy and excitement from pinning things onto my dress form and seeing it versus like throwing it on the table and coming back to it the next day. So I did a little bit of that. Um, but I just, I did to, in order to get this skirt done today to literally make a like sit down and write every single step that I need to do so that I can cross it off. So today we're going to do the hem, the back seam. Um, I have to do the back bottom flounce seam, gather the skirt, gather the top flounce, attach the flounce to the skirt, sew back the top flounce. I, I'm pretty sure I know what that means, but like, I'll explain them when we get to them. Cut the waistband, add interfacing to the waistband, add waistband to skirt, add hooks. So let's get to it. Um, I'm gonna do my best to explain everything I'm doing as I go along. I skipped a few, I skipped a videoing a few steps yesterday, so I will try to catch up with that today. But basically it's 11 a.m. and by 5 p.m. I need a skirt done. It has to happen. This is my serious face. I'm so many days behind on this. And I I did, like I do have lots of time to work on it. Like I'll still, I'm still able to get it done for Planet Comic Con. It just means that I won't be able to make, um, I wanted to make a couple other thing, like pieces of clothing to wear since I haven't like traveled to a convention in a while. And I really wanted a couple dresses to wear at Disney and um, at conventions, but those probably just won't happen like between now and leaving for Megacon. So it's okay, it'll be fine. I got this. Um, let's just jump right in. And uh, I have my iron all heated up so I can start folding um, the hem of this skirt. I do have to unpin it, so that's gonna take me a hot minute, but let's go. Okay, minor setback. So when I was sewing the flounce onto the skirt yesterday, all of this pulled up with it. This is 100% because I was not keeping an eye on the fabric underneath the flounce and only focusing on the top. So I have to take out from here to here, get this separate, re-sew that on. Um, there's another section a little further down that is not as bad, but it still needs to do. And then we can uh, press the hem and get going on our costume. Okay, so I also took this opportunity to just over edge stitch the back panel. This is kind of my way of doing a, like cleaning up the, the seam before sewing it together. So I did it on this flounce and the top flounce. And now we can finally get onto the to-do list, which is we're gonna start with the hem. So I'm gonna get that going. For the hem of the base of the skirt, I folded and pressed the edge up by a half an inch. Then I folded and pressed the new hem up by another two inches and pinned it down. This completely encased my raw edge at the bottom and it also made it easy to walk in and all that jazz. All right, so I have pleated down the top of this skirt until it is 30 inches all the way around. And now I'm gonna go grab the the flounce and um, pin that in the four places that make up the four, like splitting this whole thing into fourths and then start gathering that down as well. And that is um, where I'm at with this. I didn't get footage of this, so you won't see any footage of me pleating and sewing this, but um, it's not perfect, but because I have to still sew a thing on top of it and then also sew a waistband on it. I figure I don't have to make it perfect until I add the waistband and that's when it's gonna matter how good this looks or not.
Okay, so this is probably the last shot I'm gonna have of this because I am gonna sit down and hand sew this entire waistband on. This is just a lot of layers and my machine was already, not my machine, my needle. And this is the largest needle I have. I do not have denim needles or anything stronger on me. It was kind of like having issues sewing through the layers before adding this waistband. So I'm gonna do the waistband by hand and I'm gonna do a back stitch essentially. Um, and then I'm gonna flip it over and do the other side by hand as well. And then add the hooks and that's what I'm gonna do. So I think we should call the uh, construction portion of this video right here. And uh, I hope you enjoy the reveal. Let's chat for a second about this skirt. I'll be the first one to admit that the proportions on the skirt are a bit off from what I had hoped that they would be. A large part of this mistake would be from not making a mock-up and um, another part of it would just be the fact that I thought I had 10 yards of this lighter purple fabric and I only had five yards of this purple fabric and if we go back to the reference image or just the image of Ariel's gown the bodice is also made out of the lighter fabric so I had to set a yard aside basically for this part of it so you know it happens um I still really like the dress. I still think it's really pretty and cute. I absolutely love how delicate the lace looks on this. I'm really happy I rhinestoned it because it does catch that light a little bit and it is really pretty. And I'm also really happy with just the sheer volume of the top tier. I think that it is really pretty and dramatic and while I wish that tier was at least four inches longer, I'm still okay with it. It's my dress. I made it. It's imperfect, just like me, and I'm still gonna wear the heck out of it and like live my best Ariel Disney princess life. So with that being said, Thank you all for joining this journey with me this week on making the skirt for Ariel's ball gown. Next week, I am going to be doing a kind of deep dive on the embroidery for this. So I will be showing you a little bit of the digitization process, as well as actually stitching it out, the steps that I take to stitch it out. And then we will, the following week, wrap it all up with the bodice construction. So we are making our way through this costume and it's pretty exciting and fun. I hope you all have enjoyed this video and the, all of the videos in this series. If you absolutely cannot wait until next Sunday for the next video, I do release every video early over on patreon.com slash Casey Renee Cosplay. That's my members only website where you can get exclusive content like early access to my videos, exclusive monthly live streams, digital patterns or embroidery files, and access to the members only Discord channel. I'll leave the link below. I'd like to thank everyone for watching this video and if you like this kind of content give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and comment below. Interacting with my videos allows the YouTube algorithm to know that you like it and that others might like it too. Until next time, may all your dreams come true. 
I got like a hundred bug bites. This is gonna suck.